Hi friends, my name is Katya. This is Kat Reads A Lot. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video, which is going to be my September wrap up and October TBR. I read six books this month, almost seven. I'm almost done with the last one. Out of those six books, three were audiobooks, three were physical books, two were from the library, two were on Scribd, and then two were books that I either owned or I borrowed from a family member. I really thought I wasn't going to be able to read very much at all this month, or at least that my reading would take like a pretty big hit because I started school this month and I really thought that I wouldn't be able to like find the balance of being able to read for pleasure at least not as much as I had been able to before. But lucky for me my commute has allowed me quite a bit of time to be able to read whether that be while I'm waiting for the bus or while I'm on the bus. But without further ado let's get into the books because I'm really really excited to talk about them. The first one I'm going to talk about is The Seven Year Slip. This was so fantastic. I think this is a really perfect book for the fall. This book follows our main character Clementine who inherits an apartment from her recently deceased aunt. She and her aunt were very very close. They used to travel a lot together and the aunt told Clementine about this magical apartment. And Clementine didn't really fully understand or like grasp the extent of the magic of the apartment until now when she realizes that it can time travel. So there will be certain times where she'll walk into the apartment and instead of it being present day, she'll suddenly be back in time seven years. And wouldn't you know, seven years ago, there was a man staying in this apartment. Clementine starts to get to know this man and they start maybe forming a friendship and developing feelings for one another. But Clementine can't can't really tell him that she's from seven years in the future. So it's a really interesting, unique premise. I don't really think I've read anything like this before, but I liked that it was slightly magical without being like an overt fantasy. I really liked all of the characters, but especially the main couple. I felt like the book generally just had a good cozy fall feeling. Also a lot of scenes where the characters cooked together and reading about like the food they were eating was really mouth-watering and made me hungry just because it's described so well. My only gripe about this book and the reason that I would be more inclined to give it like a 4.25 or a 4.5 instead of the full 5 is that sometimes the dialogue just didn't feel natural. I feel like dialogue is good when I don't notice it or it doesn't like take me out of the story, but in this one I found myself like repeating things that the characters would say to myself like wondering if it felt natural to say out loud because the way that they formed their sentences and the way that they talk to each other sometimes just felt like it felt scripted. It didn't flow really naturally and so that kind of like took me out of the story sometimes. I wish I had a concrete example, but I felt so much better while reading the story while I was just like reading the narration and the things that were happening than I did when people were having conversations because so many of the things that they said, I thought to myself, this doesn't feel like what a real person would say in this situation or it doesn't feel like, like it flows naturally from what they were previously talking about. Like that's the only thing that kind of bothered me sometimes. But once I was able to kind of push past that and not necessarily ignore it, but kind of like not let it bother me, everything else about the book was so good that that conversational piece, the dialogue piece, didn't really matter as much. But yes, that is the seven year slip I definitely recommend, especially for the fall time. The other physical book that I read this month I don't have the dust jacket for, but it is the Sun and the Star by Rick Riordan and Mark Oshiro. This is the most recent book in the Camp Half-Blood Chronicles, or wait, no, it's not the most recent book. It's the second most recent book because Chalice of the Gods just came out this month. But it came out earlier this year, I believe in May, and this is the book which follows Nico D'Angelo and Will Solace while they have to go on a quest into Tartarus. I won't get too much into the plot of this book because it's like 17th in the series or something like that. It comes after the Percy Jackson series and the Heroes of Olympus series and the Trials of Apollo series and things in this book reference things from the Trials of Apollo series and the Heroes of Olympus series. So talking too much about this plot is just going to be very confusing but I really loved following Nico and Will as characters because in all of the previous books they were just side characters and Nico has always been one of my favorites. I've always loved Nico as a character ever since he was first introduced in the Titan's Curse and especially especially in Battle of the Labyrinth. Like he has just been one of my favorite characters in this Camp Half-Blood series. It was really fun to read something that was just purely from his and Will's perspectives as like a very long time fan of this series. I will say that I expected their quest to be like a little bit more difficult and a little bit more dangerous and dark considering that they were in Tartarus which is supposed to be like the scariest most dangerous. So although I really liked the way that the characters grappled with their own like weaknesses and demons and overcame a lot in terms of like their emotional 
journeys. It did bother me that like the ending felt a little bit too easy. Not that I want the characters to be suffering, but I wanted it to feel like a little bit more of a challenge. Overall, it ended up being a book that I liked but didn't love. I gave it a 3, maybe a 3.5 out of 5 stars, but I'm still really excited to read The Chalice of the Gods. Next, I read two novellas. So the first was Under One Roof, which is one of the Steminist novellas by Ali Hazelwood. This story follows our main character, Mara, who inherits a house from, I think it's like a mentor. She ends up finding out that somebody else has also inherited this house, and so then they end up living together under one roof, hence the title. I honestly kind of found this one a little bit boring. I really liked the characters. I thought they were really fun and a good fit for each other, but I wasn't like particularly interested in the story. This was a very short novella and it took me a long time to actually read it because I would set it down all the time and then have no desire to pick it up except for the fact that the book was due back to the library soon. So once I finished that novella, because the collection of stories that I checked out from the library was all three of the Steminist novellas, and as soon as I finished that one, I was like, like, I'm not really interested enough in this to read the other two in the series. So yeah, it was pleasant. It was fun. I wouldn't necessarily go out of my way to recommend it. I love Ali Hazelwood's novels, The Love Hypothesis, Love Theoretically. There was nothing like particularly bothersome or offensive or like negative that I could find with it. It was just kind of like meh, so I gave it 2.5 out of 5 stars. The other novella was actually a really fantastic 5 star novella and that was Psalm for the Wild Built. This book follows a tea monk whose job is basically to like serve people the perfect cup of tea for like whatever situation they're in at the moment and he goes on this quest, on this adventure into the woods and he ends up meeting a robot. Now in this world robots have kind of gone off and formed their own society in the wilderness and they are separate from people and so this human is the first human that this robot has ever seen and this robot is the first robot that the humans ever seen if that makes sense but as they are journeying through the forest together they end up forming a really wholesome sweet friendship and this book was just so cozy and pleasant and comforting it felt like drinking a warm cup of tea and for that reason i think it's a really good fall read i loved it so much i listened to it on audio and the narration was fantastic as well and so i'm really excited to pick up the next book soon next i read apples never fall by leanne moriarty this follows four adult siblings who find out that their mother has gone missing and so the whole book is kind of the question of where did she go is she alive did she run away did she get kidnapped i actually talked about this in my most recent reading vlog this book and then the next book that i'm going to talk about but my overall general thoughts were that i really liked the beginning because i love the writing style and the relationships between the characters and the way that those developed but the ending i did not like as much because i found the reveals to be really underwhelming and it kind of didn't ruin the whole story experience but definitely made it feel less valuable i think that if you like Malibu Rising and Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid, this book really fits into the Venn diagram of those two books because it features a lot of really similar themes both in terms of family dynamics and sibling dynamics and tennis and competitiveness. All of those things really tie into this book so if you like those books I think you would really like this one as well especially because despite the missing person premise it really doesn't have like a strong mystery thriller kind of vibe to it. It feels very much more like a contemporary women's fiction kind of book. The last book that I'm going to talk about finishing this month was Fourth Wing. This is a book that I've just seen hyped everywhere. I did really like it. I had my ups and downs with it though, I will say. And if you want to know my full thoughts, again, I have a reading vlog up where I read this book. But overall, I did have a pretty good time with it. I thought the battle scenes in particular were really exciting to read. And it's just been such a long time since I've read a book, a fantasy book about dragons. I feel like that has been a void in my life, which I've happy to have filled. I'll be honest, sometimes as soon as I post my Goodreads review, I like completely forget what I rated something. I gave it a 3.75 out of 5 stars. As for the book that I'm currently reading, I'm currently reading Say Yes to the Marquess, or maybe it's Marquess. I realized as I was reading this book, or as I was listening to the audiobook, that I've never heard somebody say that word. I know that it's like a nobility title, but I've never heard somebody say that word in an American accent, so I was reading it and trying to say it out loud, and I couldn't decide if it was like Marquess. Marquess, Marquess, Marquis. My sister thinks it's Marquis, but I didn't really believe her. Anyway, <laughs> say yes to 
that person by Tessa Dare. This is a historical romance that I don't think would have been on my radar at all except for the fact that it was recommended to me in my 12 friends recommend 12 books for 2023. So at the very beginning of the year I asked people to recommend me books and I picked 12 to read throughout the year and I haven't been super good about keeping up with it but this was one of the books on the list and it was available as an audiobook on Scribd. So that is what I've been listening to lately. I'm about halfway through and I'm enjoying it so far. This book follows our main character Cleo who has been engaged for years and years to a man named Piers, that rhymes, but he has so far kind of refused to set a wedding date and so Cleo has lost hope that they're actually going to get married and really just wants out of the engagement, but Piers's brother Rafe, who is actually pretty good friends with Cleo, or at least they've had like a good relationship over the years, is trying to convince her not to back out of the engagement and to marry his brother, but Cleo and Rafe have some chemistry of their own, so it seems like maybe she's going to back out of that engagement anyway because of this attraction between them. Like I said, it's been really fun so far. I feel like historical romances are just the perfect like escapist read. They're so like goofy and eccentric and exaggerated about everything that happens and the narrator always has like a very fancy British accent and I just have so much fun with them and this one is included. So I'm excited to chat a little bit more about this book once I actually finish it. Now let's chat about my October TBR. I'm really excited about the books that I have on my TBR at the moment. The first one is another one from my 12 books by 12 friends recommendation list. This one was recommended by my friend Chloe who knows my book taste really really well because we have we call it book club together it's basically us just buddy reading back and forth and like texting about the books that we're reading I keep a goodreads list like a shelf of all of the books that we've read together I don't know if you can see this but we're on our 117th read but anyway all of that is to say that I trust Chloe's book taste and she knows my book taste and so when she recommended these impossible things I knew that it was one that I couldn't skip this book follows three best friends who grew up together Together, and then there's some kind of incident it's very unclear from the synopsis but something that tears them apart and so then we follow them separately and see where their lives end up going and I'm hoping that they all find their way back to each other but I love stories about friendship it also seems like there's going to be strong themes of like religion and grief and growing up and all of those are things that I really love add in the fact that it is a dual timeline story where we're flashing back and forth from when they were young and they were all friends versus now when they're all like estranged and separated from each other and I really Really feel like it's going to be something that I'll really enjoy. So yes, that is These Impossible Things. I just got my library hold for the audiobook in and I'm really looking forward to starting it. Next is The Dead Romantics. This is by Ashley Poston and the reason that I want to read this book is because it's the same author as The Seven Year Slip. And I also think that the premise of The Dead Romantics will be a very perfect October read. This book follows our main character Florence who is a ghost writer for a very famous romance author. Think like a Nora Roberts, Nicholas Sparks type of famous, but she also can see ghosts. So she is a ghost writer who can see ghosts. Florence actually went through a very devastating heartbreak about a year ago and so now the romance novels that she is supposed to be writing just aren't coming as naturally as they had before. She has a brand new editor who is very handsome and very unyielding about the fact that she really needs to submit her book by the deadline when all of a sudden she is called back home to help plan a funeral for a loved one. Like I said, I feel like this will be the perfect book for October as a kind of cozy romance with a supernatural influence and I'm really looking forward to reading it. I would also really like to read Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez was one of my favorite books I've read all year and I have heard nothing but fantastic things about this one as well, particularly about the love interest. This book follows our main character Brianna and she is a doctor and that is really the extent of what I know. Brianna was one of the side characters in Part of Your World. She was really funny, kind of the voice of reason for Alexis in that book and so I'm really excited to read a book from her perspective. Last but not least is Nine Per Perfect Strangers. This is another Leanne Moriarty book. I don't know that much about the plot except that it follows nine strangers who go to a health resort. I think it's called like the Tranquilium House or something like that, but it seems like maybe there will be some secrets revealed. I don't really know, but I am excited to find out. All right, that is it for my September wrap-up and October TBR. Comment down below if you've read any of these books or if you want to read any of these books. I'd be really interested in your thoughts and let me know what your favorite book that you read in September was because I would really love to know. Thank you so much for watching this video and for spending time with me. I hope you're having the most lovely day. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the notifications and I will see you in my next video.